everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiber Flux. In this video, we're going to learn how to crochet this beautiful soft sage pull through shawl. This is a super easy shawl that you can make and really wear it year round. And it's crocheted with some simple stitches. We're going to be working this up in some V stitch, which if you watch this channel regularly, you'll know that this is one of my favorite stitches ever. It has a beautiful look, but it's a very um, easy series of stitches to work up, just really basic stitches. Now as an option, this is a rectangular shawl, but as an option, I have put in this um, hole in it, and we're gonna learn how to do that part as well, but it's a really nice way to be able to tuck your shawl, one end of your shawl into, and it will stay around your neck or around your shoulders, and it just kind of like stays put there, which is really, really nice. So let's get started. The shawl measures about 16 inches wide and it's 76 inches long. Now I use two full skeins of yarn, which we'll talk about in a minute, but I wanted this to be a nice generous fit. The opening that we'll be creating is about eight inches long as well. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a tape measure is super helpful to get the length that you're after. And we're gonna be using a 6.5 millimeter K crochet hook for this project. And let's talk about the yarn. I'm gonna be using two skeins of Red Heart with Love. You may recognize this color from our Autumn Farmhouse crochet along where we made a beautiful throw. I just loved this shade, so I wanted to make something else with it. Now I'm gonna be using two skeins. Each skein of this is 370 yards, 338 meters, seven ounces, 198 grams. And this is the sage colorway. And if you notice, there is no dye lot. So uh, one less thing to worry about there. It is machine wash and dry. So this makes a um, lovely yarn for gift giving. So the person doesn't have a whole lot of care instructions for that. Um, it is a, in case you need to substitute yarn, it is a medium four on the yarn weight scale and rec uh, recommends the 6.5 millimeter K crochet hook. So if you need to substitute yarn, just keep those two things in mind for that. And we're gonna be using uh, both skeins of this. So let's get started. Okay, so I grabbed one of my skeins of yarn and my hook and we're ready to go. So what we wanna do first is talk about the multiples. This pattern has a multiple of three plus one. So if you're not familiar with that concept, that just means that when you're doing your starting chain, you just go three plus three plus three plus three, three plus three and so forth until you get the width that you want and then add one more chain onto that. So our starting chain for this particular shawl is 61. Again, that's a multiple of three plus one if you wanna change the width of your shawl. So what we need to do first is put a slip knot on our hook. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop. Reach in with your hook, bring up a loop and tighten. Then we're going to chain 61. To make a chain, wrap yarn around hook. Let me just zoom in so you can see this part a little bit better. So we wrapped yarn around hook, bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 60, and 61. So here is our starting chain. It's a nice long chain, so it's gonna give us a, a nice generous wide shawl. Not too wide, but just, I think it's just right. What we wanna do now is, uh, well, first, let me just tell you one little tip. I know a lot of you ask this, and if your starting chain is too tight, just know that you can go up a hook size for your starting chain, come back down to the K hook for the rest of your project. That's super helpful if you're having trouble with that. Also loosening up your hands helps maybe stretch them a little bit beforehand. All those things help a lot. I do get that question a lot, so I definitely wanted to mention that. Let's begin with row one. Now we're gonna work row one and then row two, and then row two is the row that we'll repeat for a while before we get to the actual keyhole part of our scarf, okay? So this stitch part, the stitch sequence is actually really straightforward, and it, it's also easy to make the keyhole part. So just bear with me, and let's begin row one, okay? So for row one, we're gonna work a our first V. We're gonna do V stitch, some really nice classic V stitch. We're gonna work our first V in the fourth chain from the hook. So this loop here does not count. And we're gonna go one, two, three, and four. So in that chain right there, the fourth chain from the hook, we're gonna work our first V. Our V is 
double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert it in that fourth chain from the hook, bring up a loop, you'll have three loops on your hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Then we're gonna chain one, and then we're gonna work another double crochet, all in that same chain, okay? So here is our first little V. Next, we're going to skip two chains, one, two, and then in the next chain, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna work our next V. So work a double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. Super easy. I love this stitch, I use it all the time. Um, if you've made other fiber flux patterns, you've probably worked the V stitch along with me. It's super easy and it's very beautiful as well. Skip two chains, work your next V. Double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. Skip two chains, next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. I gotta say these center pull balls of yarn are super helpful. Skip two chains, work your next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. You can sort of kind of like straighten things out as you go, I like to do that. Skip two chains, one, two, work your next V. Whoops, let's try that again. There we go, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip two chains and in the next chain, work your next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. I wanted to mention too, once you get the hang of this, you can uh, skip along to the next part towards the end of this row, we will um, be finishing up the row and moving on to row two. So if you've mastered this by now, you can skip ahead, totally fine. If you want to crochet along with me, definitely feel free to do that as well. Skip two chains in the chain after that, work your next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip two chains, work a V into the next chain. And I went into more than one loop there. There we go, double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet in that same chain. Skip two chains, work your next V in the chain after that. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip two chains, one, two, and in the chain after that, work your next V. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip two chains and in the chain after that, work your next V. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip two chains, work your next V, double crochet, whoops, chain one, double crochet. Skip two chains, one, two, and in the chain after that, work your next V. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip two chains, one, two, and in the next chain, work your next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Getting some beautiful stitch work along here. Skip two chains, work your next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip two chains, work your next V. We're almost to the end. We've come a long way and it looks pretty already. So we worked our next V, skip two chains, work your next V. Skip two chains, work your next V. Double crochet, 
This is the last V of the row. Chain one, double crochet. Now you should have three chains left. If you only have two or, you know, four, I wouldn't worry too, too much about it. You could always shift this last V over one or more. Um, just as long as you don't have like six chains or something like that. But you should have three chains at the end of the row. And then what you're going to do is just work a double crochet into that last chain. No V this time, just one double crochet. Just like that. Row one is complete and it looks great. And we have a nice width to our shawl. It looks very beautiful. Let's move on to row two. And then we'll kind of depart after that row. We'll work up uh, a stretch before our keyhole section of our tutorial. So for row two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain three. One, two, three. Now I promise you this row that we just did and the row we're about to do, row two, is 10 times easier than row one. So if you thought row one was pretty easy, row two is 10 times easier. You don't have to skip anything or count anything. So we chain three and we're gonna turn. Now we're just going to work a V into the center of each V from the previous row. So when we made our V, we put a chain one in the middle, that created a chain one space. So if you go back to the blog and look at the written pattern, that's gonna be called the chain one space. So we're gonna work our V, our double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the center of each V in each chain one space, okay? So what we're gonna do, let's do a couple of these together and then we'll finish off the row on our own. So locate that first V of your row and work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, right in the center of that V. So our Vs will be stacked on top of one another. Next V in that chain one space, same thing. Work your double crochet, whoops, chain one, double crochet the center of that V. Hop over to the next V, do the same thing. Double crochet. Wait a minute, I dropped my stitch. <laughs> Does this ever happen to you? Do you ever drop stitches? I think it's pretty common, right? All right, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Okay, we're just gonna be doing this all the way across. Let's do two more together. Next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Hop over to the next V in that chain one space, work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Okay, I'm gonna continue across and we'll rejoin towards the end of this round and learn how to um, finish off the row. Just coming up to the end of row two, I'm gonna work that very last V of the row, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then to finish off the row, we're just gonna work a double crochet into that topmost chain of the turning chain from the previous row, okay? So just work a double crochet right into that. So row two is complete. Now we're gonna work row two for a little bit longer. I'm gonna keep going with row two. And then if you hang in there with me, join me for the next part, we're gonna work on the keyhole part so you can um, pass your shawl through a keyhole and it will look very elegant. You can of course skip this and just keep going with row two and make a classic shawl if you prefer. So stick by and we're gonna do the keyhole opening of our shawl next. Just working that last stitch of the row before we get to the hole that we're gonna create so we can pull it through the hole. Now, if you're not into this part of the shawl, if you just wanna wear it as a regular shawl, just keep going till the end, that's totally fine. But if you wanna make that kind of keyhole where you can um, put it through and it stays in place, then stick with me here. So to get our uh, hole nice and centered, what we wanna do is grab some stitch markers, or you can use a little piece of scrap yarn to tie it, or paper clips or safety pins, really anything you have laying around. It doesn't have to be a fancy stitch marker at all. So what we wanna do is center this. So we have, the easiest way to do it is, let me move my hook. We have our, our Vs, see on either end here? So we want to do a V on either side, V, 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 okay? So you wanna mark it. So we counted one, two, three, four, five, six. 
on the sixth V in, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So on the sixth V in on the other side, we're going to add our stitch markers, super duper easy. And then you can uh, lock them if they're locking kind, but no big deal, super easy. Um, and there is our pass through. If you want it to be a little bit wider, just shift it out a little bit. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to work the next couple of rows so we can establish this keyhole, if you will. Also, I didn't mention this before, but I've worked 32 total rows before beginning this next row where we're gonna add the hole, okay? So what we wanna do, so work rows one through 32, is we're gonna start the row the same way we've been working it. I just wanted to point out too, I think I had a blue hook earlier. This is still the same 6.5 millimeter hook. It's just a different one. Okay, so chain three, one, two, three, and turn your work, leaving those stitch markers on. And then what we're gonna do is work our Vs up until we get to our stitch marker, okay? So we're just gonna work double crochet, chain one, double crochet, next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, let me get my yarn situated here, okay, next V, we're just going to do this all the way across till we get to that first stitch marker. Okay, I think we're coming up to it here. Okay, so then we're gonna work the next V. All right, and now we're at the V with our stitch marker, okay? Next, what we need to do is make a long chain to kind of hop up over this area. So we're gonna chain 27. That's gonna represent each of these double crochet chains and double crochets all the way across, okay? So chain 27, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27, okay? So now we have this like, it's almost like when you make a handle. If you've ever joined me for a bag or a tote, um, we're gonna do that. Now, we did not work into the V with our stitch marker, so we're also gonna do the same thing on the other side. So skip over that V with the stitch marker, and in the V after that, work a V into that V, okay? So double crochet, just be careful that your chain doesn't get all twisty. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Then continue working your Vs across. So work a V into the next V. Work a V into the next V. Into the next V just like that, all the way across. We're just finishing up the row as we normally would, okay? And then we're gonna work our double crochet in the turning chain, the topmost chain of the turning chain to finish up the row. Same thing as we've done in previous rows. Okay, now you can see we have a little opening for our shawl to go through. So what we need to do now is work back into this to create um, a, some solidity again, moving forward. So what we're gonna do for the next row is, let me just zoom in a little bit, chain three, same thing, one, two, three, and turn your work. You can leave those stitch markers in, it's okay, or take them out at this point. It's They're, they're really not needed anymore. We just needed to mark our spot. Um, so you're gonna work a V in the first V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Work a V in the next one and just do this all the way across till you get to that chain that we created. 
Okay, so just work those all the way across, just like that. And then there's our last V before we get to that chain. Okay. Very nice. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is work V's into this chain 27 space. Remember we did 27 chains? That's the, our chain space. So we don't really, we're just going to work it into the space. But you want to make sure you have the same number of V's as what's happening down here. Okay. Now let's count ahead just to give us a little preview. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. And we're going to do these together. So into that chain space, work for your first V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. We can position all of this later also. Okay, so work a V for your next V represented down below. We just want to make sure everything is matching and that uh, we have the same number of V's as we continue on to our rows. Otherwise, we're increasing and decreasing and we definitely don't want to do that. And you can kind of reposition all this. See how I'm like sort of sliding the V's around? That's okay. Okay, and then we're just gonna do another V. Okay, and we're just gonna do this all the way across. Okay, this is our fourth V, four, five, remember double crochet, chain one, double crochet, six, seven, eight, and nine. All right, now at this time, we're gonna take a moment, just pull your hook out, leave a nice loop there so you can find it later. But we're gonna sort of straighten things out a little bit, okay? So spread out those Vs that you just created, sort of like push them together, but pull them apart from the other ones. You know what I mean? Just sort of like spread things out a little bit. I'm getting those V's together, but apart from each other. Okay, so just kind of spread all that out. Get it all nice and straight now. Now, this will, um, these V's are going to sort of like lock into place as we do our next row. So if it if it's a little goofy looking right now, it's it's perfectly fine. Okay, so we have them all nice and lined up. And then what we're going to do is put your hook back in there and then just continue working V's into the V's from the previous row across. Okay, so double crochet, chain one, double crochet, just to refresh. And then we're just going to continue into those V's all the way across till the end. Okay. Just working those last few V's. Okay, then to finish up the row, we're going to work a double crochet in the top of that turning chain, just to finish up. Okay. We're gonna do one more row together, but you can see we're starting to build a little bit of sort of substance on there, okay? We're gonna work one more row together and then you can just kind of move on with the rest of the shawl as normal, okay? This, this row is actually just like normal, but I just wanted to do this row with you because we're gonna be working into that kind of different area than we worked previously, okay? But what you're gonna do for this row is just chain three, one, two, three, and turn your work. And then 
just work a V into every V across. Okay, let's just do this row together really quick so you can just see it all kind of unfold. Work your Vs into every V. And this is pretty straightforward. We're just working in, remember those Vs we just created in that chain 27 space? We're just gonna work all the way across. It might be a little bit different feeling in your hands when you're working that one section, but it's it's the same exact thing we're doing, okay? So we're coming up to that section, that last V before that hole. Whoops, may have, let me just redo that one one more time there. Okay, now let's work that very last V before we sort of go off onto that open area. Okay, so locate the first V you created on there and just work a V into that one. Okay, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Easy peasy. Next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Next V, same thing. All same thing all whoops, same thing all the way across. I uh, want to just say as a side note, I often will go through and redo stitches if I don't like the way they look or sometimes you drop your stitch or you drop your yarn, totally fine. It's better to just kind of redo it on the spot than have a spot on your project that bothers you <laughs> after, you know, you get 20 rows in or whatever. So it's no big deal to pull it apart a little bit and redo it if you need to. I do that all the time. Okay, we're just working those V's into those V's we created over here in this open area. And it's really easy to create an opening in your work. You just have to make sure that the stitches and the chains you do match what's gonna be happening in the, in the subsequent rows. So that's why we needed to kind of mirror what we were doing. So it, it all has like a nice flow to it and, and doesn't increase or decrease or anything like that. So you can see we're starting to get the same look. It's just an opening now. And let's just finish up this row together because for the rest of your project, you're just gonna be repeating this row over and over again till you get to the end and your shawl is as long as you would like it to be or you run out of yarn or whatever happens first. Okay, so we're just working those last few Vs. And if you've got the hang of this, you can kind of skip ahead if you like. I know some people like to use the slow motion feature. Some people like to back up and watch it again. Some people, um, especially those of you who crochet regularly, you may want to skip ahead to different areas. Um, it's You're free to do whatever you need to do to get the project the way you want it to look. Okay, work that last V. And then that double crochet into that turning chain, that topmost chain of our turning chain. And it looks great. Okay, so now we have this nice little opening. I'm not in any hurry to take these stitch markers out. I'm just gonna leave them, they're fine for now. Um, if they bother you, pull them out, no big deal, either way. So our shawl looks wonderful, it's got a nice little opening. I'm gonna continue working my rows of V stitch, just regular rows like we've been doing all along. And then we'll rejoin towards the end. Just keep going till your shawl is as long as you'd like it to be. Try it on and make sure that that, that pass through is hitting in the right spot. It should be in like the front middle of your body. Um, but just keep going with that until it's as long as you'd like it to be. I'm going to use up my sage of this skein and then my other skein. And then we'll rejoin in just a moment and we're going to finish it up. Just working that very last stitch of the row. And then I just have a little teeny bit of yarn left. So we are going to wrap it up. We use two full skeins of yarn. So then what we need to do is cut the yarn, leaving a long tail. We can scoot all this over. And then you can fasten off. So wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop to fasten off. And then the last thing we need to do is just weave in our ends. Now I have a couple ends. This is where we left off, obviously. So you want to grab your tapestry needle, thread your tapestry needle, and then 
This is reversible, so you can really do it on either side. So whenever you have something that's reversible, just make sure when you weave the ends in that you're really going through the middle of those stitches so it doesn't show on either side. Because when you throw it on, you're not gonna be really looking for that. So just go in one direction, go in the other direction. And if you're just using one color like I did, it will camouflage pretty well, but you wanna just make sure your finish work is always nice and neat. And then I just came back in the other direction and I'm gonna give it a snip. Now I have tails here in the middle where we joined the new yarn and where um, we begin also. Once all your ends are woven in, you can wear your shawl. Now I had these stitch markers in from a little earlier in the video marking our spot. So make sure you take those out if you had something in there marking as well. And then it's ready to wear. It looks so pretty. And I have to tell you, if you've never used with love like this, it's a very soft yarn. It's very easy to stitch up. It's a nice usable, soft machine wash yarn. And you can put it right through that opening and just um, wear it in those early days of spring. It actually um, is like the perfect spring accessory. So that is how you crochet the soft sage pull through shawl. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again. Bye.